Hello. I welcome you all to another Tuesday why teach a core campus. This is Language Jones, an academy of knowledge economy. My name is Josephine. I'm your digital professor. Last Tuesday, I started on what I call Jules Notes. For those who are so familiar with academics and the terms at times, you will have heard about Cliff Notes. Cliff Notes is sort of an appraiser, an overview, a brief. Not really a synopsis, but a brief of a very long lectures. In response to demand, some of my lectures that I've taught in the past, that seems to be very long, I decided to do what I call those notes on them, just to make you understand and remember those things that I have taught in the past. Today, I'm going to give you Joe's notes too. I welcome you back. That's language Joe's Alvord. Like I said, today, I'm going to give you a very short clip again, which I call just note two on the environment. I said in the last video of Tuesday last week, we had about four videos in the past on environment, two on how to value your environment and two on sustainability and development of an environment. Our environment is so very, very important how you treat your environment, how you treat others, creatures and species in your environment is so very important to balance. And I know I used to say that human beings, we have a way of stressing other species in our environment, which has actually led to imbalance of the environment. I'm going to talk today about nature, the concept of our environment, take it down to human population, the growth of human population in our environment, and then end it with the issue of technology. So I want you to take your pen and take your paper. As a teacher, I like to give some bullet points and I like you to be able to take notes as I teach, it's going to be very short and you are not going to be bored, I assure you of that. Just notes, two, on the environment. Let me start with nature. Sometimes we find it so easy to equate nature with our environment, but most of the times nature does not equal environment, especially when we are talking about the human environment relationship. The relationship stands within nature as a whole. Humankind and their hominid ancestors have been a part of natural landscapes for over 3 million years. We should not view nature as something from which humans are inherently absent. And wilderness as a natural place from which a trace of humans is absent. No, 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 no. We should not think of when we talk about nature, we are talking about wilderness, we are talking about those animals living down there or those other creatures that are living down there. No, because when we talk about nature, our, we human beings and all other species, we are part of nature in an environment. Nature, natural evolution is characterized 
by the adjustment of natural balances over long periods of time. And every speech is received. Yeah. But every speech is also give, is give and take. And I can give you a very good practical example. Do you know why it is so wonderful and beautiful to have trees, green plants, flowers around wherever you live, to have greens all around you? Because what those trees give out, oxygen, is what we need as humans to breathe. And what we breathe out, like in carbon dioxide, is what those greens, those plants, those trees need to survive. So every species give and take. But you see, humans enter every natural environment as an exotic patubi, the existing balances of species and refusing to be party to any new balance. Humankind, we take so much more from the environment and give so very, very little back to that environment. By its very nature, the human presence represents stress to every environment. And when that presence becomes permanent and grows even greater, the stress remains also permanent. And balance is forever impossible. Can you now see why some other of those speeches are now retaliating or revolting? This is leading to all sorts of unknown cause of diseases or disasters. Let's look at human population. The estimated global population of humans for 8,000 BC was just about 10 million. You can imagine. The estimated global population of humans by 1625 AD was estimated as about 500 million. And when you do a kind of quick calculation, this shows us it's about 5.1 million humans every century over a period of more than 9,000 years. Now wait and see what is happening right now. Population dramatically ascended from 1 billion in 1825 to approximately 7 billion. When I say today, I'm talking about 220, sorry. Today, we have almost close to 9 billion, maybe rough estimate, 8.5 in 2022. Because at 2020 is when we are talking about 7 billion. And this shows that it took over 200,000 years of human history for the world's population to reach 1 billion and only 200 years more to reach 7 billion as at 2020. So population growth follows a geometrical curve, of course. And this explains the radically increasing growth rate in later years. At the present, global human population is doubling every 40 years. And it should be obvious that increasing human population has an impact on both natural and human built environments. Look at the population in India, in China, in Africa. Rising human populations combined with industrial revolution and has stripped up people of the land and promoted urban life. But human based cities are by no means ideal human environments. When you talk about balance, the way God created it, do you think it's by mistake or just coincidence that when God created Adam and Eve, he put them in the garden of Eden? Garden, surrounded by the other species so that can give us something and we can give them something and then there is a balance in the nature and environment. Now let's talk about issue of technology. Humankind modify the environment to suit themselves. 
and while other animals accept the environment as it is. What I'm saying is that technology is one of the chief features of human relationship that with that environment that everyone source. Most other entities of the world possess a different relationship to the environment. When you go into the wilderness, you find lions in the natural environment, you find tiger in the environment, what they do, how they behave, you will discover that we have different relationships to our environments. We judge, that means humankind's judge, that they do not, that animals do not possess technology. Of course, we know they do not. What kind of technology as a dog or a cat or a lion or a tiger or something like that or a bird or eagle, what? Or fishes in the sea. What kind of technology do they have? But the human tendency towards technological relationship is so long established. As a matter of fact, paleontologists accept it as the horizon of human life, as opposed to the hominid precursors of human life. I want to encourage us to value our environment, to sustain and develop our environment, is for our own good, is for good health, is for prosperity. Look at the time of this pandemic, the COVID-19, when people are looking for artificial oxygen, oxygen, anywhere, oxygen. If you have maintained balance within an environment, we will have enough oxygen to breathe with. But you see, we have destroyed our environment, cutting off all the trees, all the great plants. We have skyscraper, we have house, next to house, I've never seen, and there's nothing within our environment. That's, and now, in some areas, some continents, like in Africa, there's a great pollution, land pollution, sea pollution, air pollution, And people have been affected with it. Where I come from originally, there's a lot of noise pollution. And that's why you find most people from Nigeria. When they talk, it looks as if they're shouting. No, noise pollution has affected the way we hear things. And when we want to talk, we want to talk above the way we hear that thing. in some riverine communities that are into fishing and things like that, they can no longer maintain their livelihood with fishing or farming because of sea pollution, oil spillage, and so many other things. So I want to encourage us to please value our environment, sustain our environment, and develop our environment for our good health. I wish you a fantastic week. Join me on Friday for my usual Friday tonic. I thank you all my subscribers. I thank you all who are viewing my videos. Give me feedback so I can please you more. Thank you.